The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin Pigskin McElroy. I'm Travis Touchdown McElroy. And I'm Griffin McElroy. I'm a hologram this time. Couldn't get the real me. Couldn't get the meet me. This time, it's a hologram one for this time, the episode. We all loved the big game last night. And uh, a lot of fun was had by all, and congratulations. Or none was. It's or possible was. no fun was had. Or maybe it all ended in a tie, and everybody just went home. Yeah, and they fell in love. All the New England's fans fell in love with all the Philadelphia's fans. Anything's possible in football, and that's what's so exciting and dynamic about this sport. That's why Vince is getting in on the action. We wanted to say in our second consecutive football intro uh, to both the teams, you'll get them next year. Yeah. Or um, you got them this year. Or you got you did get them this year. Maybe they both you got win. them. Maybe they both win. Maybe they do the thing, and then the Eagles win. And they're like, you know what, guys? We had so much fun. And we still have lots of fun Doritos commercials that we didn't even have time to do. Because uh, they, they won the game in three uh, periods. So let's just... Do you guys want to play again? What do they do if they finish the game early? Has that yeah. ever happened? All the time. All the time. All and they're the just time. like, what do we do with this leftover guy? Because we already got the top score. Yeah. And we can't play anymore. As we all know, if your team gets to 69 points, you instantly <laughs> win whether or not you're ahead. Cause somebody, and if you go over, game over, you yeah. lose. Well, no, but you just don't win. So, like, you may want to you overshoot it, right? Oh, shoot. Why did we go for two? We had 68 points, and now we're at, we have 70. Well, that means we don't get the instant win. And somebody else comes in and gets 69. Nice. They win. But it's only been one period. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Our defense fucking sucks. Oh, shit. Um, somebody caught the snitch already. Somebody you know, caught the like, 69 snitch. That's the thing that you don't talk about in, um, in, in Quidditch, by the way, of like, if somebody catches the snitch in the first five minutes and you fucking paid like, 800 Krugels or whatever for your like box seats and you're like oh they get it's been three minutes and the game's done do I get my Krugels back no I just want to step in here it's it's um it it, it would be Bitcoin that is what uh, wizards and warlocks use and that's why I can't find a motherfucking graphics card for my computer just because you know Hagrid's buying them all up reselling them on eBay for a thousand bucks piece of shit. So, um, big predictions for the game this year. Um, I have a lot of money down on, like, 30 bucks on, um, one that is probably not going to happen, but if it does, it has, like, a 100 times buyout, so that would be, like, 300 Mm -hmm. bucks, is, um, the rapture happens in the middle of the game, and everyone just, well, not everyone, but most people, well, not most people, of just that. Tom Brady. I mean, let's say it. Just yeah. Tom Brady. Do you think Jesus is going to let Tom Brady in after all the deflate gate? I don't think so. <laughs> Jesus My, Jesus loves hard, full balls, not these soft ones that Tom likes to play with. My prediction is uh, that if, uh, if it's, I have to figure out the right tense here, if they will have won, if the Patriots will have won in the past, right? Yeah. Then uh, w- during the post game interview, they're going to say to Tom Brady, like, what are you going to do now? And he's going to say, I'm going to go fuck that beauty rest mattress I've had my eye on. Yeah. Yeah. He loves to do that. Puts his wiener. R- you all, you all seen that commercial, right? Where he's definitely going to have sex with that mattress. And the dude's uh. like, will there be anything else? And he's like, no, I'm just going to go fuck that mattress. And he fucks a mattress, huh? Yeah. Well, in the extended version, they, they edit it for TV, but you can find it on YouTube. Where there's like a, just a solid ten minute um, rest of the commercial where he's just oh, he fucks and you know what I'll say it makes and you love. Said, you said YouTube you said YouTube likes that YouTube oh, YouTube, YouTube wants that content on their YouTube channel. loves it 
Come you can on. see Tom Brady make love to a mattress on YouTube. All right. And search for those words exactly. Yeah, explicitly. One of the things that I'm going to love, I did love, was the Prince hologram. Now, what's fun about the Prince hologram is everybody, I think people started joking about it at some point, and then everybody started saying, like, yeah, actually, now that I think about it, the way things are going, there will probably be a Prince hologram. Yeah. yeah. So Justin Timberlake and uh, Sheila E., got on the got on the phone sheila e takes to twitter and is like don't even trip jt assures me there's no hologram but like if i was gonna drop a hologram that's Mm. exactly the environment i want to drop it into yeah because when you're not expecting a hologram that's when you're gonna love it the most like and you know sheila e can't keep a secret here's what i want telegraph tell a sheila e i want (laughs) if it will have happened that yeah. like the hologram pops up and everybody's kind of like uh, and then like JT tries to like throw it off to Prince and Prince just like shakes his head. Yeah, it's I would like, love it nope. if the hologram of Prince, who was explicitly against ever being a hologram ever, was just like, uh, actually, no, dude, nope. you can't just sort of fucking conjure me there, JT. I mean, it's fucked that you get to do the Super Bowl again anyway. And yeah, Jenna is we all remember life. We all kind of yeah. remember that. Dude. This is mine now. No, JT, I think maybe calm down for just a minute because it's not, you don't get to have Prince's sort of essence. Do you know what I mean, dude? Like, here's the right. one, here's the one way I'm okay with them doing a Prince hologram, right? Oh, be just, ooh, Trav, be- no. Look at the ice below you, bud. You can see the water right through. It's while so thin. while JT is performing, they just cut to the stands, and Prince is just like sitting in a seat, like eating some popcorn. Cut oh, back to I Justin see. Timberlake, right? And then people are just like, "Wait, was that a Prince hologram?" No, hold on. Yeah. Uh, and then um, at the end of it, Justin Timberlake is banned from the Super Bowl for life. Well, congratulations to everybody. I guess is what we're trying to get at. Uh, it's like we're, we're really all winners. All, it kind of feels like we all won, and those commercials. Don't get me started on the app. You know what? I only watch the big game, which we have to call it. I only watch the big game for the ads. Tony, can you go back and edit out every time we said Super Bowl and put in big game, Tony? (laughs) No, don't put in big game, Tony. Why are you laughing? Don't put in big game, Tony. We don't call the Super Bowl (laughs) big game, Tony. I mean, we can if you if you want. You've been trying to get Big Game Tony going for a long time, and we told you it's not It's, it's not, not going to catch on. <laughs> Ladies it's and gentlemen, not. welcome to Big Game Tony 52. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> it's Big Game Tony Sunday. <laughs> Are you ready for some Tony? Hey, uh, hey, folks, all our big screen TVs are on sale to celebrate big screen Tony Sunday. Oh, Come on down for this big screen Tony sale. Holy shit. Big game Tony Sunday. Let's actually help people for a change. Hi, I brothers. think we just help people with some good jokes about the, about the big game Tony. Hi, brothers. I work as a waiter at a Thai restaurant from 530 to 11. <laughs> Seems unnecessary, but thank you for the specificity. Well, One of the you'll hi- find out why. One of the highlights of working here is that there's a family-style meal the staff gets for dinner, which the chefs put extra special love and care into. However, if it's a slow night, my boss will sometimes tell me I can go home early. That sounds nice. What this means is that I don't get dinner from the kitchen, because the chefs and waiters usually eat at around 10. Sometimes, I can literally smell the curry cookie when my boss tells me to go home, and I have to live with the fact that I don't get to eat it, and instead have to survive on cereal or leftover pasta. When my boss tells me to go home, is it acceptable for me to say, no, actually, I'd like to stay for dinner, thank you very much? Or is that absolutely crazy? And that's from Tongue Tied in New Jersey. This is, um, hmm. Well, see, here's, the, okay, the reason you get sent home is because there's not enough business to justify paying for you to be there. What is the window of time that you would have to be within 10 o'clock that it would not be weird if you said, okay, I'm off the clock, but I'm going to stick around until dinner time. Right? Is that 15 minutes? 30 minutes? Two hours? Two hours is, it's not two hours. I think if it's about to pop off, I think you're fine to be like, can I, can, you mind if I kick it and just eat? Cause like, 
I would love to just grub here if that's fine by you. The boss is like, grub away. Grub this, away. This was challenging for me because my two okay. favorite things in Earth is eaten and not working. And so yes. th- it sounds like these two things are so diametrically opposed. If you tell me I'm going to send you home an hour early, I think that's another hour of Monster Hunter I can play before my body has to go to sleep and that's very good to me it's almost as good as eating this good free food it sounds like which is also something i'm I'm extremely into so in my mind you're looking at a win-win this is a great job because it's a win-win every night you work either you get to go home early and spend an hour or two doing shit you'd rather do than work or you work the whole time but then you get to eat some yum stuff and that's very good, too. I think you need to celebrate sort of either way this thing breaks. But that's what I said. I think 20 minutes, half hour of like, okay, cool. I'm off the clock. I'm Because you could ostensibly like just shoot the shit with the boss until dinner is, you know, and then be like, oh, well, as long as I'm here. Right, oh, stall, a, stall yeah. them in a conversation. That's very good, Travis, where it's like you don't explicitly ask to be sent home. You just enjoy their company so much that eventually it would be like rude for you right. to leave then. The bu- the dinner's coming out. It's time for me to just kick it. I Can we talk for a second about getting sent home early from work? Because I uh, there's really nothing better than yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And it's fun. And the fun thing about that is you don't get paid for when you get sent home early from work. And you ostensibly got a job because you did want to get paid right. for time rendered. Yes. But that value proposition – Something about getting sent home an hour early, that value proposition just goes straight out the window. Like, I, uh, yeah, if you could just stream together weeks of getting sent home early, I mean, again, financially, you're going to be in ruined. ruined. Yeah. It just nothing goes down sweeter and, than that. And you absolutely lose that when you work for yourself or like when you, when, because like I remember even before like working from home when I worked at the, the theater. I I wasn't hourly, I was salary, and so, like, leaving early was a decision I made, Mm. and always made me feel guilty and bad, but having a boss-type person who looks at me and goes, this decision isn't up to you, I'm telling you to go home and take a nap, it's like, okay. I I, I like it the opposite. I added him a bim-bam, and then I'm like, time to yank the old... Pterodactyl, what? the old pterodactyl oh. whistle, and uh, what? Clock oh, out? Jesus! <laughs> okay, okay. So I can oh, right okay. out. Wow. Okay. Oh, oh my God! You should have gotten to the end of that sentence quicker, Griffin. <laughs> my oh, oh, my back! Hitting in that podcast, it's uh, flaring up. I guess the rainstorms coming in. Better punch out. Play some Monster Hunter for nine hours. Ooh, my back! <laughs> You've <Yikes>. earned it. <laughs> I think I earned it. Um, or stay at the podcast mines, or just uh, you can probably just take the food, right? Like nobody's gonna yell at you. Well, it's not if it's food. not ready. I mean, it's curry. You could probably just throw it on the pot at home and get it get it to where it needs to be. Oh, that's imagine. good. Okay, Griffin has a great point. What you do is you go in the kitchen with a Tupperware and you just start scooping things out of pots <laughs> as they're cooking. You're like, don't worry, bros. I'll finish this one at home. Yeah, I mean, curry's a lot of principal work, right? It's a lot of chopping and screwing and uh, boiling and then simmering and then simmering. And then really like 90% of it's just mostly simmering. Mm-hmm. You can do that at home. You just throw it on the pot. And then yeah, you're that's ready a to- real good way to cut out the love and care, too, that the chefs usually provide if you consistently say, well, I could just do this myself. I yeah. feel like the the love and the care is in the mise en place. Like after that. It's just it's just heat and time. Like you could do that. Yeah, stove st- stovetop don't care. Stovetop don't <laughs> love. It's all right, guys. I'll nuke it <laughs> at home. How long do you think I need to nuke this to finish up your your work? I'm not saying curry's easy to cook. It's extremely difficult. But what what me and Justin are saying is like most of that stuff comes in the beginning of it when you sort of build the house that the curry's going to live in, and then you sort of let that house settle on the stovetop. I, and and stove I think it comes care. right at the end, when the person lifts the lid at the very end to check it, kisses the surface of the curry, Yes, and that's where the love gets infused and into you can, it. And you know, really, like a master curry chef by how blistered and horribly scarred their mm-hmm. lips are from kissing and this can, extremely <laughs> hot stuff. And can Don't they you? get the lipstick print to stay on the surface of the and curry? <laughs> It's hard, man. Yeah. Don't you guys hate when you get takeout curry and you take a bite and you're like, ugh, 
you can tell they've only kissed it like two or three times. Mm-hmm. It's like if I had known that when I was there, I would have just asked for extra kisses. Yeah. While I was already there, well, I could drive back out to get the rest of my kisses. And not, not only that, Justin, it's also like the peanut butter where you open it up and there's the surface level, right, where the kiss was. And if that's already been scooped out and you're getting down to like the middle of the peanut butter, it like, did the kiss make it all the way down there? You know what I mean? So that's the problem. If someone makes a big old pot of curry, like a big old pot, Thank they kiss you, the yes. top, even if they kiss it 10 times, is that really making it to the bottom you third of the curry? The thing is, you have to kiss your ingredients as you go. Mm-hmm. That's the only way to make sure that you're really well covered. That's so uh, true. Griffin, how about how about a Yahoo? Blue Apron kisses all their stuff for you, so you don't have to worry about that. So it yep. shows up pre smooched. You do have to a... kiss your own salt and pepper and olive oil, though. Yes. So that's a disposable ramekin of kisses in case you want to add more and you can handle it. Yeah. This one was sent in by the delivery man, Seth Carlson. Thank you, Seth. It's Yahoo Answers user Mini Mini Tekel asks do doves like being used for magic tricks huh ethics huh. ethics y'all I've been watching a lot of good places just the ethics though of this one ethics. is a real challenge oh, yeah. is this okay how is this not already a cartoon movie I've got hold on cartoon movie hey Travis read me everything magician. on that shitty notepad right now I Dove. wanna know everything you got no 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 I'm googling it first just to make uh, sure <laughs> um, okay understand what I think about you and sort of how your brain works that I was 100% sure you had a notebook full of half baked movie uh, no I absolutely do in my phone I, I do keep a running note the other day I, I just wrote down taglines for movies that don't exist and my favorite one was she's one hip granny and it's about a, a grandmother who gets hip surgery and uh, has a bionic hip that maybe turns into a superhero or some kind of dance champion. Yeah, don't know. Okay. Haven't fleshed it out. Um, I I think it would be hard to make a compelling animated feature about a bird that spends multiple hours at a time in a man's armpit. Yeah, that I don't think that that like you could you could get Jason Sudeikis to do the voice if you uh-huh. wanted to. Still, would not be the footage, the visual element, just of the, the visual of element of that very good, dark. That's a good twist for the ending, though. Like a bird, like a dove who's trying to maybe it's a pigeon, right? Who isn't a dove, and the pigeon's trying to break into show business. And everyone's like, uh, we only bring doves in here, and the pigeon's like, I can do it, right? And the pigeon's training, and then at the end, he's like, oh yeah, you know what? You made it. Come on, bird. But then the bird, the end of the movie is just like him in a sleeve and he's like oh this isn't oh, oh wait this, yeah this it sucks. sucks all right let's yeah, let's break it sucks. let's break it down pros and cons okay, okay. Con- the con i think that like any performer the dove probably hates the part where she's in a person's armpit mm-hmm. uh-huh. but then for m- many hours that part is probably not a big hit but I think that the dove probably loves the part where everybody's like, oh, shit, a dove. Yeah. Like, that's got to re- be thrilling. Think of a time where you are that excited to see a bird. It's almost never. pretty much never. My, my like, interest in birds is a sliding scale to they're up in the sky, they're in a tree. Okay. They're right in front of me on the sidewalk as I'm walking towards them. Oh, I'm a little interested. I hope that thing flies away before I get to it. It almost certainly will. I'm not worried about it. Two, uh, it gets in my house somehow. Oh, God, oh, God, I'm extremely interested in this bird, but not really excited for its presence. Yes. Two, oh, shit, that, where did that thing even come from? Probably the armpit, but that's still kind of an impressive feat. <laughs> now, to counteract, to counteract the, the counter for the, the armpit thing is magicians are known to train their bodies to get a lot of space in there. I don't know, like, Pin? Pin has, like, you could get, like, a gallon and a half of water inside of Pin's armpit. Yeah, it's um, a deep, deep, deep pit. Chris Angel, yeah. before he started doing sort of more transgressive magical acts, he did a lot of sort of dove work. You, I mean, you could eat an entire bowl of gazpacho, like a, a full, like, full belly's worth of gazpacho out of that dude's pit. If you were uh, if you were nasty, he actually had a lot of his dove pockets removed mm-hmm. to make it harder on him to do magic because it was just he lost sort of so the thrill easy. of it. Yeah, you know, it was, I'm, yeah, I'm too thinking, easy. I'm thinking about what that moment must be like for the dove. Right, you're in a dark uh, armpit, you know, and you're like, oh, I hate this, and then you come out the sleeve, and you're like, ha- you get half a second of like, oh yes, I'm out, and then it's all bright lights and techno music and people clapping really loudly, and you're probably like, put me back in that armpit. This yeah. sucks. It's probably a little I, bit spooky. I've never been physically present for a show where a dove is magically sent out in the audience after a magician does his incredible trick. 
Um, I think that would be highly distracting because that has gone from magic trick almost instantly devolves from magic trick into serious scenario. Mm. I would be clocking that bird for the rest of the program, just making sure that its movements did not hove into my sort of like action scene. Because what somebody in the audience has to get the dove. Like yeah, somebody's gonna somebody's have to grab the dove. dove. Yeah. Well, I somebody's think the closest the we've come, Justin, is when we went to uh, the pirate adventure. Um, yes. And they sent out a big old parrot. Big old parrot yeah. made a loop, and then I get never showed up again for the rest of the show. Which I do have to think. Like, <laughs> no. I wish I could do that as a performer. Like being a play where I just come out pre-show. Hi everybody, and then I sit backstage. Here's and a big wild. Here, here's a big wild dog. I'm just gonna let it out into the audience for the rest of the show. Uh, keep an eye on it. Don't look at it. Uh, let's, let's, how come Parrot is okay to be out inside Bird? But pretty much most other birds, if they're outside in the house, it's like, mm. if I go into a house and there's a parrot just like chilling, not in any sort of cap- captivity, I'm like, yeah, all right. Any other bird, I'm like, well, you know, you got a pigeon in here, right? Uh, you know? Even I a think parrot, a really, fun, a really fun goof would be like invite someone over to your house for the first time and there's like a parrot on a stand, right? And then they're like, oh, a parrot. And you react like, what? Oh, God, how did oh, that God, get oh, in God. here? It's because it can cons- talk, right? That's it. That's well, because it's big, up. easy to spot. Size. My concern about animal size can be plotted on a, a sort of bell curve to at the peak of the bell curve is the likelihood with which I could spin kick the animal. So like there's, if it's very small, if it's a mouse or pigeon, which is a mouse that flies it, that I could, would have a very hard time spin kicking. If it gets larger than that to like medium range, like a parrot, absolutely, absolutely. One flying spin kick. I could take that down. If it gets bigger than that, a very, very like a bear, right? I, I could spin kick it all day long. Yes. It's not going to have the desired effect. So the, on, real. On, and, on the X axis is ability to spin kick, and on the Y axis is impact need, of spin need kick. To, well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. and there's a Z axis of need to spin kick, because I want to make uh. it clear. I'm assuming Justin's talking about self-defense here and not that he is some sort of small game, the smallest game hunter who goes around with an insatiable desire to spin kick God's creations. The new sequel to Monster Hunter. Just yeah, like. Justin spin kicks a bunch of birds. I need to know I can defend my family from the animal yes. uh, via spin kick, if need be. Now, Because there is also a number of, like, one parrot v a hundred pigeons. You know what I mean? Like, we could get into some Tippy Hedron shit. I'm just like, I don't mind a dove. That is oh, how birds no, ends. Oh, no, a thousand doves. That's how birds ends. This Tippy Hunter does a sick Street Fighter spin kick, gets like 20 <laughs> doves at a time in, the, in, in, in that kick. I, I want to make it another point here. I feel like there would be sort of a mounting resentment for a dove used in a magic trick because there really is not much career advancement you could seek beyond that as a dove aside from john woo movie use yes and that's a, that's a, and that is a very small or like even the job pool for this one very competitive is sign of a miracle from god mm-hmm. and that's oh yeah that's 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 a i don't even know where you apply like you can't get zip recruiter's great but i don't think you can get on zip recruiter a du- bird zip recruiter and say like great dove beautiful wings beautiful lustrous beak Looking to be used as in a, to show people that it's going to stop raining real soon from God. Uh, Trav, can I uh, check in with you real quick and uh-huh. see how much energy you expended trying to come up with a punny name for a bird related? Oh, to a lot, Justin. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I, I was sitting here in silence trying to do it. <laughs> That's exactly what any, was going any, on. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Do you have any failed uh, failed things that you just want to like throw out there? Was Travis did, in the last thirty seconds has the, has the word bird recruiter crossed your mind? Sort of no, it was more like tweet recruiter. I was trying to do it like bird sounds cheap recruit, you know, like something in there. Um, and I just and I honestly just wasn't getting there. It just wasn't. I I, I didn't even have any false starts. The engine wasn't even turning over because yeah, I I was simultaneously trying to come up with a punny name for it and also thinking, man, I hope that there's not like a whole like magicians are bad to doves kind of thing. Um, let me. Just I mean, say, they are. Let's like let's, let's lay that the tiger out on the line. table and yeah. yell at it. 
it's not a nice thing to do. One of my cool metrics is what I do it to a human child because <laughs> I don't think that I would do that to a human child. I put it in my sleeve and and then throw it out into an audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do think okay, it's yeah, uncool. when you put it like that. Okay. It is an this, uncool thing. You're right. It's an it's inhumane and I think we can put 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 this to bed. Doves do not like being used for magic tricks. And so I would like to present to you the magic trick of the future. You see me I've got a white cloth, and I say, keep an eye on this cloth, folks. You're going to love what happens next. And then I tuck it into my sleeve or whatever magicians do, and then I pull out a drone. And then I just kind of fly the drone around the audience for a little bit, for like 10 minutes, and that's going to yes. eat up a lot of magic show time. I actually think <laughs> that that, would, that is far more impressive than a duh. Okay, cool. Uh, it's, a sm- it's a small drone. I'm not talking about like one of those big ones they use for movies and shit. I'm not uh-huh. talking about one of those Avatar 2 drones. I'm talking about like a little one, you stocking stuffer drone. Here's a, okay, here's a movie. All right, here's, mm, here's a cool magic trick. No, go ahead and say the movie, Trav. Okay. Oh, just ch- chase that instinct, bud. There's no reason to shy away from it. Okay, here's the magic movie about doves. <laughs> so the dove... It's all about, it's kind of a John Henry kind of thing where now there's a mechanical dove being brought in who does his own magic tricks and the dove has to outperform the drone. Um, but also, uh, sorry. The dove, the dove is the magician. Cause this could be great if, if a magician pulls a dove out and the dove's like, oh yeah. And the dove lifts up its wing and produces like a bee. (laughs) It's, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then the bee yeah, pulls I mean, out some listen. plankton or something like that and is like, what's up? And then the plankton lifts up and what's that is a blue whale. And it just starts all over again. Mm, that's what the, the circle of life is from the Lion King. How about another question? Yeah, I'd love that. Don't put doves uh, in your armpits. I just accidentally, like, I'm looking over these questions and realizing the first three are all about food. And then I just remembered I didn't eat breakfast. So oh. they might all be connected. Anyways, next question. While leaving our apartment today, my boyfriend and I found a torn open, unmarked cardboard box full of 10 boxes of Tagalong Girl Scout cookies in our lawn. It was rained on, but none of the cookie boxes are damaged. There is a receipt with the attended address in it, but the address is half a mile away. The address also belongs to the house that I lived next to last year, and they were terrible neighbors. God. Can we keep these? Are they ours now or will we end up in some horrible cookie hell that's from taking tagalongs in muncie now i don't know if this is going to be um important for the 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 show itself but uh tagalongs are the ones that are like a cookie with peanut butter on top and then covered in chocolate yeah oh shit i Um, love those but Sure, of course. That's, ridiculous. Of course you do. That specific cookie, there's two questions here. One, okay. are you going to eat these cookies? And they didn't even mention this. Are we going to eat these rained on outside cookies? I don't know how to begin unpacking that. I don't know how to begin answering that. You take that. them out of the box. No, I know how eating cookies works, Travis. I'm very good at it. Um, the other question is return returning them. Because here's my theory. The, the Girl Scout in this family... Uh-huh. Of the neighbors you lived to next year, next to last year, who were terrible, is on that grift grind so hard. Yeah, I just went out, sold the whole freaking box. It was amazing. Sold the whole freaking box. Don't even worry about it. So I'm gonna get my points that I need for the trip to Disneyland because the box. Now this grift has not been thought through very well. Because I mean, no, this is yes. what like forty dollars that they. Unless they stole, maybe they, you know, stole $40, or they went up to somebody and said, hey, can I just have $40? And they said, yes. And they said, good. And then they threw the box they were carrying as hard and as far away as they possibly could. I actually I, did a similar thing when I was a child. This is another Travis anecdote. Is this where, band candy? Yeah, it was band candy. And I ate, I think, all the bars. And then, like, it came time to turn in the money or the unsold bars. And I had to go to mom and dad and be like, hey, um, I need $30 because I just ate all of those. And, or, and, or, or I and will they go did to prison. It. Yeah. Yeah. The words candy fraud. And they did it and they were not, they were not pleased uh, no. with me for, oh, oh, so many reasons. I think you have to take the cookies to them and drop them on their porch. It's an angel test. The problem is, the problem is that you don't know 
there's two things you don't know. One, have the people moved? And maybe uh-huh. there's very nice new people there who spent the last fifty dollars they had buying ten boxes of tagalong cookies. Are they bad with money? Of course they are. That's how they got down to just fifty dollars left. And bad Do with they, cookies, it sounds like, because they just bad left them with, laying on their lawn somewhere. Yeah, bad with cookies. But if you don't take the cookies as a person, you're setting up a world where this person is going to be mercilessly hounding a Girl Scout asking about their cookies. And that's not very nice. Like, that's not a good reality for that poor girl to to have to endure. Not only that, but I I, I look at this and I think about all the factors here, right? Ten boxes. Right? Ten boxes. Ten boxes, and it appears to be rained on, but no damage to the boxes. And it just so happens to be the address of a house you live next to, mm. and you know they're bad people, but you also know that these cookies belong. This is a test of some sort. I tr- yeah. I've been watching a lot of Good Place, and I truly believe that this is some sort of ethical, because to have all those factors of like- All those ju- factors. It's, it's just far place. enough away- that you'd is have there, to drive there, but not so far that, like, you don't know where it is. You know the people who live there. Somebody's watching you. Yeah, you're if, being watched. If there is a van parked across the street from your place and the windows are blacked out, I can give you basically a 100% Griffin Macro guarantee that John Quinones is in there somewhere. Yeah, because he's uh-huh. run out of ideas pretty much completely um, based on how many times we reference him in our podcast about situations like this. Here's the problem, though, and this is this is where my dilemma is. This is a good thing to do, right? Taking the cookies back. That is a good thing. Yeah. To, by the, and by the way, I recognize the whole time that we've been talking about this question, you have been at home, chocolate all over your mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah. But it, it's a good thing to do. Or like, alternatively, you, you've you just left a wet cookie crate in your home somewhere, which yeah. is also very unappealing. Um, it, It's a good thing to do, right? Taking these cookies back categorically unless this is a grift Um, and you are going to be putting this girl scout on blast and you can not just turn on a on a fellow grifter like this like it's yeah that's true it's it's really maybe you could talk to the girl scout about maybe cutting you in on the grift now there's an interesting idea (laughs) you said you you you, an an un uh, uh unaddressed envelope you just drop it off at their front door is an envelope with one tagalong in it as like a <laughs> warning. <laughs> maybe like, wrapped I, I in a napkin the, i know the grift i need a taste i've run this one so many times i need i need into your grift and maybe you could actually help with the grift like mm-hmm. you could you could just be like hi i'm looking for a tag i i uh, want tag along so much. Uh, if you've got some coming, I'll pay you twice. If you just give me half of it now, uh-huh. half of the money now. Well, I mean, the parent- I can give the- you twice as many tag alongs later. Yeah, the parents might answer the door though, and you have to be mm. like, "Hello, your daughter sold me a box of tag along cookies," and because you gotta get to her right to like set up the set up the grift yeah. arrangement, and so you're like, "And I don't know." How to eat them. So I was hoping to get a little bit more additional de- details from your little salesperson. And, um, I need, I, I, I'm, and then the grift what? is over because you fucked I get, up. I wanted to discuss wine pairings uh-huh. and I thought maybe some, she would have some suggestions. Oh, you're going to prison. Actually, if you do mine, you're going to prison. So don't do mine. Yeah. Mine is, seems like a bad idea. Um, no, oh, this don't... is it. This is, I figured out the grift. I figured out the grift. Okay. What's the grift? Okay. The person orders the boxes from the Girl Scout. The Girl Scout orders them, right? They then say, the box never made it to me. Then another box of 10 taglongs gets sent. Then that person pays for it. Then the Girl Scout goes back, collects the 10 boxes, resells those. Bada bing, bada boom. Rolling in money. So wait, you so, think that the do- the the Girl Scout is in some sort of shipping fulfillment business where she is handling bulk orders, and something went wrong uh-huh. s- somewhere in the logistical side, well, and she's okay. counting on you. That's why the address is so close to you. Counting on you returning the box once the second batch has been ordered, and then yeah. that doubles up profits. Just, it's a profit game. It's a- I don't understand why the Girl Scout has to use somebody's yard as uh-huh. a dead drop for this for this grift. It seems like she could just keep it somewhere in her home. Now they come and check that shit. 
Okay. The Girl okay. Scouts are very thorough. Very thorough. I think you should return these cookies. Or one other thing you could do, P.O. Box 54. No. Leads West Virginia 2006. Don't make us complicit and, in the sin. Yeah, don't no, don't make us complicit in the sin. Also, I don't like tagalongs that much. What? Um, so You I, scoop out the peanut butter with your teeth. You eat that chunk, I, and then you eat the whole cookie. What's not to love? So there, so there is a way to eat tagalongs. Yes, there so is. There is advice. a correct way. Uh, yes. Okay, so maybe the the scam is better. You than can I say that to the parents, like I need help eating these things, and like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then you take it, and first you press it up into your cheek, and you're like, oh nope, missed again. <laughs> then you take just like a little bit of a nibble. You're gonna watch me do this whole thing. <laughs> is the nose involved? Please help. How much does tongue she, stuff should I be doing? Does she have WhatsApp? I'll just, I could just hit her up there. That would be fine. Uh, listen, if we're going to buy a bunch of Girl Scout cookies of our own, I don't know if it's the, if the season is on or not. I'm assuming. If oh, it's it on. Is. Like Donkey Kong, my friend. Is it on? Okay. Oh, uh, well, we're going to need to go to the money zone. So let's go. Our first sponsor this week is Casper. You like to sleep, coward? Whoa, huh? Wow. wow. No, sleep Listen, is good. They want sleep to happen in this app. Oh, they want sleep. Okay, they want... Oh, good. Okay, see, I, you know what? I should read to the end. <laughs> sleep is good. Yeah. Yes. Which is something that Casper, uh, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time, thinks as well. They offer affordable prices because Casper cuts out the middleman and you know, what is the middleman doing to your mattress? A lot of people don't know. Like, are they getting a sleep in on it? Are they maybe trying it out before you get to it? You don't have to worry about that with Casper. Is your, is your middleman Tom Brady wearing a big fake mustache? Because I'll tell you what he's going to do to your mattress. <laughs> Casper that- mattresses combine multiple supportive, never fucked femory moms. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. They combine multiple. Sub- I misread. I'm sorry. I misread. Multiple. No, it says, fem- it says femory moms here. And that's, <laughs> that's on ne- Casper. Never fucked femory moms for a quality sleep surface that uh, has the right amount of both sink and bounce. <laughs> we, will Tom. Be, we will not be paid for this advertisement. <laughs> that's fine. Sure. I get it. Yeah. Uh, Kira, Max Fun, go ahead and email us when you want to set up the make good for this ad, <laughs> which we will not be compensated for. You can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. Get fifty dollars towards selected mattresses by visiting casper.com slash my brother and using promo code my brother at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. I, I have a really serious question, and, and I, I that we had a lot of fun there, but this question, I think we. We need to give it sort of the um, the weight that it it deserves because it's uh, it's it's heavy. Um, and that is, do you guys think that Tom Brady marries each mattress before he has sex with them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I want to tell you about Pro Flowers. I got a beautiful little bouquet of roses sent to me by Pro Flowers uh, last week, and they are so lovely. Um, it is so exciting. We've gotten pro flowers in like this a few times and it's so nice. Like I never really think about, uh, like getting, getting flowers in the house. Like I'm not much of a plant guy, but it's really nice to just have a beautiful little vase of, of flowers just sitting in your house and making everything look good and smell good. Um, and pro flowers sets you up like that. They'll, they'll send you a bouquet. They'll send you the vase you need. They'll send you the food that you need to keep the flowers fresh. It's, it's really great. Uh, so an exclusive Valentine's Day bouquet from pro flowers is a perfect way to make a big impression. Uh, pro flowers thought inside the box. So you can too, their flowers are boxed fresh and delivered fast so that they'll last surprisingly longer. Seven days, at least you just choose a delivery date and it's guaranteed making you look good right now. Our listeners can send a bouquet to their Valentine or whoever and save 20% off of their purchase of $29 or more. So hurry in order today. Valentine's Day is uh, it's next week to get 20% what? off your purchase. Yeah, I know. To get 20% off your purchase of 29 bucks or more, go to proflowers.com today and use the promo code my brother in the special codes box at checkout. That's proflowers.com and the code my brother. And that's the end of the ad, Proflowers. So you can stop listening right there. One fun thing is that Pro Flowers is sponsoring three of our podcasts, so I got uh, three boxes of Pro Flowers sent to my house on the same day. Hell yeah! So now it kind of looks like you in died. my house, it, 
it kind of looks like I'm uh, trying to hide the scent of a corpse I buried underneath my floorboards yeah. because I have three vases of uh, flowers. No, that on is my a good question. Table. How would you cover up the smell of a corpse under your floorboards? Because for me, it would be Febreze. I would turn to with these prices. I don't think you could afford not to use Pro Flowers. Fourteen Knights of Araman is an asymmetrical two-player unit and resource management card game. One player leads the defense of a medieval city, while the other controls a reawakening ancient evil. Each player will take turns building their economy and recruiting powerful units for the ongoing war. Both players recruit from the same five decks, but a high priest in service to the city behaves quite differently than a cult leader pledged to the dark. You visit a to z game dot com or find them on Kickstarter to see more. That sounds That's, awesome. Yeah, that sounds, sounds really good. cool. I want I I want to get get that now. And that's a go a t o z game dot com a to z game dot com. I'm just looking uh, at this website. It's a nice little website. This is a nice little website. This game looks dope as hell. Just gonna go grab this one real quick. Just can't get this. Uh, while you guys do that, I'll read the next one. This is for, and uh, these are all uh, exclamation points, so I will try to read it with please appropriate. Don't yell. Please don't, please don't. I'm yell. not please going to yell. yell. I'm not going to yell. I'm just saying I edit the show, and so if you I'm yell, I'm not going it's, to yell. It's a lot I'm of going to try to say it with excitement. Elena, Ash, Chris, Mike, Riley, Cheryl, Erica, Patrick, Meredith. Now it is just Sherry. Um, I think you read the exclamation point. Damn L there. No, that's fine because there's a free one there. Because Sherry, you are included in this one, and Cheryl, just go make a friend named Sherry, Cheryl, and that's more free money zone for you. And this is from Turbles to my beloved Vortex pals. Great. If all has gone according to plan, you now have a recording of a McRoy exclaiming your name. You can use as a ringtone. Yes, I threw one in for myself. My name is Sherry. <laughs> You're all amazing people and good, good friends. Thank you for being horny for this one, even in the darkest of times. Love you always, Turbo. And that's so important that we find the ability, even in the darkest hour, to still maintain a level of horniness. Mm. Like, that's, it's so, because sometimes you're like, oh, no, everything seems so down and so bleak. And but not s- horny. But still. And not horny at all. I'm so horny for this. You know, like, it's so important. I have a message here for Clara, and it's from Savannah, who says, To the best wolf mom around, happy 21st. From Urinetown Ensemble to Company Wives, every show with you is a joy. Can't wait for you to save the oceans. I love you to shrimp heaven and back. So does all of Hoof and Horn, which is why they pitched in for this Jumbotron. Love, Julia, Wes, Karen, Maddie, Libby, Shayna, Adam, Cole, Booty, and Savannah. One of those names is not like the other. And it's, <sighs> it's Karen. I love when we get a jumbotron that makes me go, "What I want to know about these people. Yeah, I want to know all about this. These sound like great people. Are they all in the Piss musical? I don't know. Are they, are they in the Piss musical? What is Hoof and Horn? Is it like Skull and Bones? But for, you know, Buffalo? But for Buffalo? But for Buffaloes? This is a message for like nine Buffaloes? <laughs> so what's the story here, y'all? Do Buffaloes like being used in Magic Acts? Absolutely. They love it. Yeah, Mark. Hey, buddy. Oh, hey, what's up, ma'am? Um, so I'm at this mafia restaurant. What? I'm going to go in and ask these guys what they think the best pasta shape is. Mark, they're probably eating it. I have a hunch that it's probably ravioli, but I mean, you know what? That's a good idea. Whatever they're eating, I'll just take a look in their bowls Why don't and you see what they have. Maybe There's supposed to be a big meeting there today. Can you see it from the street? That sounds really dangerous. I'm just going to go inside and ask. Don't, don't bother them. They're probably eating, you know. Look, I'm not threatened by them. How about we tell them what the best pasta is on our podcast? We got this with Mark and Hal. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank God. Tuesdays at 9? On MaximumFun.org. Here comes the hot and ready Yahoo for you. Just picked it up. God. But I was I was really excited. I want a much squad. I want to much squad. Are you trying not to wake somebody up? Because it was a very reserved. No, I'm just getting over a little bit of a a bug. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast. Um, I do want to get uh, there's a there's an elephant in the room. The elephant is shaped like nachos at Olive Garden. Yes, I know oh there are nachos God, at Olive Garden. Justin, what's wrong, Griff? 
This is this not is what the, the worst. This is the worst. This is so much worse than Taco Bell doing fries. This is so much worse than that. But that that's not what the episode's about today. I just want to mention I know that, but they don't have the fucking guts. They don't have they don't have the 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 guts to make a press release about uh their their loaded pasta chips, which are chips made of pasta. Uh-huh with stuff dumped on them they don't have the guts to do a press release for it this is just this is just pasta they ruined and now they're trying to find a way to get it out it's extremely al dente it's it's extremely al dente it's alfred dente cherry peppers in an alfredo drizzle oh my god it's chilling but they don't have the guts to do a press release so i can't do uh yeah you have to send me a press release folks that, that's the only way this this segment works and i do have one here from einstein bros um they're the bros that make bagels uh and they introduce breakfast themed alarm tones <laughs> so einstein brothers a place that sells his bagels announced the launch of wake up tones for limited edition downloadable alarm tones that mimic morning breakfast essentials to help people wake up on the right side of the bed in time for the most important meal of the day breakfast. Now, if you visit EinsteinBros.com uh-huh. slash wake up, you can download the free MP3 alarm <laughs> direct direct your yeah. mobile device and you get a coupon for an egg sandwich now here's the thing so the the consumer that this uh, not program is for is the consumer that is like i really need the sound of bacon sizzling or coffee brewing to use as a very i would assume ineffective alarm but I just don't know where to get the glossy MP3 yeah. file to mm-hmm. upload. So what they're s- supposing here is that I'm going to go to I'm going to type in the web address einsteinbros.com slash wake up. I want to pick from bacon, coffee, a rooster crowing or eggs frying. I'm going to pick one of those MP3s to download. Yeah. Now, only one of those seems to me to be of alarm sound quality. Yeah. I've never I, heard eggs frying and covered my ears and thought, oh, God, no, yeah. so loud. The ineffectiveness, I think, is what what we're getting at there. I don't see how that would work very well. So this is a fun thing we can do because this is an audio program. Let's just play eggs frying right now just so we can have a conversation about it. Rise and shine, sizzling bacon, fresh cracked eggs, and warm, delicious bagels aren't going to eat themselves. Go ahead, get up, let Einstein Brothers Bagels handle breakfast so you can handle your day. So there's a few problems here with eggs frying. The first is that the sound that starts off is quiet, not loud enough to wake you up. If it does wake you up, it also kind of sounds like the sound of, I don't know, drywall being ablaze. Uh, which is maybe not the, like, oh God, oh God, oh God, smash through the window every time your phone goes off because you think that, a, you know, a fire has has taken the house. That's a challenge. The other challenge is the, I'm sorry, stranger who has wandered into your <laughs> bedtime routine to yell at you about this bagel store. These eggs aren't going to eat themselves is maybe the weirdest phrase to use to wake someone up. And, you know, if you're going to go that far to have a voice in it, why not just make that like here's somebody telling you to get the fuck up? Like that seems to me a more these this is not an eggs frying alarm clock. This is a human voice saying, Hey, go eat hey, some eggs. At Einstein Brothers. Can we just can we just before can we just sample coffee brewing? Yeah, see, I wanted to talk about coffee brewing also, because there's a sound and it sounds a little like something else. And let's go ahead and tune in. Good morning. Time to conquer another day. Stop by Einstein Brothers Bagels for an incredible breakfast and cup of coffee to set your day up for success. You got this. Good morning. It's time to take a piss. It's <laughs> definitely, I'm definitely already pissing. And guess what, pal? You are too, right now. Because this is the sound you chose to woke up to today. Every so often in Munch Squad, I, like, Justin will talk about a food, and I, I will think... 
who will want that? And then I think somebody. There's somebody who is experiencing some kind of food challenge. I myself just recently on trends like these, we were talking about a bagel place that for uh, the Super Bowl was making a pretzel, excuse me, Big Game Tony was making a uh, pretzel bagel with mint chocolate chip spread on it. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's right. really good. And here's the thing about this. I don't only wonder who would want these. But also, like, the amount of work you would have to go to to actually put these onto your phone. It would be tremendous. It would be a tremendous. It would be a tremendous. tremendous. Hey, hey, listen. If you're a a higher-ranked member of the Schmier Society, which is actually a thing that they call their their fans, I guess, uh, it doesn't... You want this. You want these strangers to be the first voice that you hear in the morning. You want the sound of this hot, troubled piss... To be the first thing that you hear in the morning, because you hear that hot, troubled piss, and you think, Einstein Brothers sounds pretty good right about now. You also, if the alarm, what if you were married, and you, I think that's fair grounds for divorce, is like, every morning, my husband Jeffrey, who I love very much, wakes up to a piss alarm, and then a man yells at him to remind him to go to Einstein Brothers. And, and, and let me just say, let me just say, also, if you're the sort of person that would download an Einstein Brothers ringtone to serve as your alarm you do not need a reminder to go to einstein brothers i have to imagine that is your first fucking thought every day when you wake up is i have got to get to einstein brothers right away now i think we have an opportunity here though because they clearly uh missed missed the point here einstein brothers did but i mean i think there's a lot of opportunity here and maybe we could just knock out a few wake up alarms for them i like i have some coffee right here so i could go like Mm, hot damn. Get your ass to Einstein's, partner. That'll wake people up, I feel like. Yeah. The sound is bad, doesn't sound like piss, uh-huh. and then the voice is just more of more of a command. That'll that'll get your pants on. Let me see what Foley stuff I have around here. I, here let me try this. Ugh. A lot of paperwork at the office you gotta do. You better wake up. You gotta- just stop by Einstein. Try that again, it's, but yell it like louder because it's not. Okay. It's got and long try to make the paperwork sound less like farting. Yeah, it sounded a lot okay. like a big toot. Okay. Huh. That paperwork isn't gonna complete itself. Louder. Get Wait. louder at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Start off kind of quiet, but then get louder. Okay. That paperwork isn't gonna <laughs> do itself. Time to get some brothers. <laughs> Bagels? Coffee? They're not picky. You can have whatever you want! At Einstein Brothers Bagels, or other places that have bagels. I'm not getting a cut. My name is Enrique Iglesias, and I recorded this voicemail just for you. Perfect. Well, is it a voicemail? It, it was a, a voicemail. Also, leave a message. Hold on, let me... Leave a message at the sound of the bacon. <laughs> If you if you are not a coward, you will download these and make them your voicemail message. <laughs> uh, I was calling to talk to a human well, being, but well, certainly uh, I couldn't have reached that considering yeah. your voicemail message. Ah, Jesus! All right, let me try. Yeah. L- let me try another one. Oh yeah, try just one more. Do the bit. Bacon, 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 Kevin Bacon. You've reached Kevin Bacon's <laughs> phone. Leave a message at the numbers at the top. At the leave a message. If you know Kevin Bacon, you can get that to him. So here's a Yahoo. This one was sent in by Level 9000, Yadru, Drew, Drew, Davenport. We've done one similar to this before, but it's this one has some exciting sort of uh, options for us. It's Yahoo Answers user. Orange Glow Ahoy asks, I need a catchphrase. Help. Here they is. One. I like a do what? <laughs> Two, Oyster Burger a Palooza. Three, Hack it, why don't ya? End of options. So, can I, I just think we, uh, we have a lot of great stuff here in the writer's room. Um, and I figure we could just kind of weigh them because obviously it's got to be one of these three. I feel like this is the new sort of like personality test of what kind of person you are. Like, Hack it, why don't ya's want to leave the party a little bit earlier than everybody else because they need to, you know, go home and re- recuperate some of their energy. I, 
here's my question, and I'm I'm really trying to rack my brain for a catchphrase from a popular media thing that in I mean maybe got any cheese a, a question I'm looking for a question what catchphrase what, what was the other catchphrase Trav that I was trying to remember this last night because I was showing my daughter um some Urkel clips on YouTube uh-huh um wh- what was the catchphrase that you identified that we didn't recognize not as a while I'm pouring in fact not, not while, I'm, while pouring. I'm pouring yeah, yeah that was a good I forget I want to watch okay. that clip now he had a lot of them. Let's put, the yeah, way. it was almost yeah. like Merkel was purely written to just have catchphrases. It's weird. Yeah. I like a do what? I like, I a, like do a do what. Is, what let's, so good. Let's circle back to I like a do what. Okay. Because I think it has the most promise. Oyster Burger Palooza, the use case for that one mm. is going to be quite limited, I worry. Well, also, I'm, it's got a lot of um, hard syllables in it. Like it doesn't. It's not. It doesn't exactly drip from the tongue. It's oyster it's burger. Hard to say. Pollu- yeah, it takes a long time to say too. People are going to be tuning out in it's the exhausting. middle of your catchphrase. Um, uh, also, it's straight up dookie nonsense. And the other two are yes, also that, but they at least form semi coherent thoughts. Now, I actually mm-hmm. see a lot of promise for hack it. Why don't you? Because that seems like a good thing. Like if somebody's complaining, like. Oh, I can't I can't get my iPhone to like connect to the well hack it, why don't you? Because in this day and age of people trying to figure out, you know, constant life hacks. Oh, ten I see. Th- yeah, ten things you didn't I- know your iPhone could do, that kind of like YouTube. You're just like, Oh, this guy, hack it, why don't you? And it it could both be used to encourage someone to figure out how to use their device properly, but also it's kind of a snarky like, Oh, why weren't you just telling me about some life hacks? Just hack it, why don't you? I think it means like hack it, like yeah, that's like, how I read it. Like, oh, you just yeah, can't hack just it. Like, oh, you can't hack it. buddy, hack but it. I, why don't you? But I do think Travis is right, and we're wrong. We're the wrong ones because it could just it could just be like you know I'm having a lot of trouble getting big wins in player unknowns battlegrounds. It's like, well, get I'll hack it. Why don't you get some you know look through walls, do some cheats on yeah. there. I, I get the appeal now of Hack It Why Don't You, but can I just offer this up? Mm. I, I like a do what? I like a do yeah. what? Like, here's what I it's like. It's so good. It's rare to find a catchphrase, as I said, that is a question. It's even rarer to find a catchphrase that is both a question and a response to something someone else has just said. That is so specific that someone would be like, uh, Travis, you like uh, crosswords? I like a do what? Crosswords. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Thank you for asking. Yes. Thank you for co- reconfirming that. Um, I got some good ones here, though, from Yahoo Answerers. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Um, I want to thank God and Jesus, um, just my heaven friends, for this How one. How much longer do we have on the Yahoo Answers, by the way? Do we have a timetable? Because they definitely killed Instant Messenger. Yeah. And, like, I, f- I'm, I'm, I mean, they, like, the broad, the broad sense here. Kim like, Trails. Kim Trails, they killed it because they didn't have the guts. Um, the, it can't have long, right? Probably not long. So let's uh, gather gather our, our delicious rosebuds that we're going to eat like you do with rosebuds. Um, proflowers.com. Pro, yeah, proflowers, the tastiest <laughs> rosebuds. Uh, They're yeah, edible. They Well, everything is if you try hard enough. Yahoo Answers user question mark says, don't light your farts on a hayride. And again, the use case for this one mm-hmm. narrow. It's more of a more of an uh, a folksy idiom, I would say. Less the ca- catchphrases have to be broadly applicable. I mean, the fact that shh, not why I'm poor and got as many uses as it did is is kind, of, kind an of an anomaly. Yeah. Um, this user who's just an emoji, so I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Um, says eat my shorts, and that's now, a good one. But the problem with that is that it was already used. Well, just take it and done. turn it. Don't eat my shorts. Hey, stop eating my shorts. Stop eating my shorts. Again, the use case. <laughs> no, you could use it of like if somebody if, it kind of like don't blow smoke up my ass. It would be like if someone was like, hey, I really think you're doing a great job. I'm like, listen, man, I don't need uh, it. Stop eating my shorts. I don't need shorts. anybody eating my shorts right now. Um, <laughs> Smiley, <laughs> listen, Smiley says. Someone eating my shorts is the last thing I need, okay? <laughs> don't eat my shorts and tell me it's a goat. <laughs> Listen, people have been eating my shorts around here all morning. Just be straight with me, Doug. Is it a good Stop presentation or not? Don't eat my shorts on this one. 
hey, Valerie, we're all counting on you. Don't eat your shorts, okay? <laughs> Just don't eat your shorts. <laughs> this is your moment. You're the anchor here, present- okay? Don't eat your shorts. You're the anchor here. This is your moment to shine at the big presentation. Don't eat your shorts. Go in there. You make them eat their shorts. <laughs> 14 seconds on the clock in the fourth period, and Tom Brady just has wide open receivers, and he really eats the shorts on this one, folks. <laughs> A big, stinky mouthful of shorts for oh, Thomas Brady. He's basically chewing the shorts at this point. Oh. Um, Smiley says, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Or, when you go out with friends to eat, when the bill comes... Tell them you got the tip. Always wear clean underwear or look both ways when crossing the street. That's so, like a routine. Yeah, it's not a it's catchphrase. A, it's like a catchphrase. It's like a... And the best one here is from um, <laughs> Sports with a Z 55 said, where did you buy those clothes? At the toilet store? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a mean catchphrase, but I mean, some catchphrases are... Are 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 transgressive like? Well, this. now they, here's what's interesting about this. Um, it's not, it. I guess it could be considered a catchphrase, but it is also a joke from uh, Anger Man, in which someone is trying to make a joke in the movie oh, and see, fails. I see, I see. Well, that's a good point. Can we just do more jokes from Anger Man on our fucking podcast without realizing it? Has it been long enough now? I mean, shit, dude. I ate the shorts hard on that one. <laughs> Oh, uh, God. Damn it. Now I it's making me wonder them. how many other things we ate the shorts on and said, like, an Anchorman thing throughout the last 392 episodes. I mean, the jokes per minute on, in that film is a lot. And so it's kind of, you kind of used them all up, I think. Well, and also, they use a lot of words in there that if we said, like, you know, coffee, and it's like, oh, they said coffee once on Anchorman. That was an Anchorman Yeah, I mean, reference. we said coffee a lot when we were talking about the Einstein Brothers stupid thing. And I think mm-hmm. we said San Diego before. That's an Anchorman reference. Damn it. Ugh. Ugh. Nanu, nanu. That's a good one. That's a good catchphrase. That's a good one because it's um, you can use it pretty much any time that you don't have something different to say. I don't think so. Is a good one, but you have oh, to say it like that. That's fine. Because if you say, I don't think so. That's I not like a to do what? I like to do what? I like to do what? <laughs> It does, it does land. It does land. <laughs> All right. Let's end the episode. Uh, so that's the end of our show. Hey, um, I'm doing the voice of a guy named Very Deadward on a show called Slug Riot. And you can find that at uh, vrv.co and search for Slug Riot. Um, it's a fun animated series about a guy who makes a mold core band. Tr- his sister tries to make him bring it back. It's fun. The episode's like three minutes long. Go check it out. You'll like it. I destroyed my voice doing it. So please enjoy make it. Make it worth it. Um, yeah, make it worth it. Also, that's where you can find uh, my brother, my brother, me to stream. If you want to watch the episodes and own them for your very own, you can do so uh, now uh, via Google Play or on iTunes. You can get them there. Um, oh. And so, thank you again to everybody who got that. And um, we uh, we put up to a, take that to number one on the TV charts. We put up a commentary for episode two to thank everybody. So you can hear uh, the three of us and uh, director and showrunner J D Amato. Uh, that's in the in in our just our regular my brother my brother and me feed. If you want to listen to the commentary and watch the episode at the same time, uh, I also want to say so. I I put together a secret society show here in Cincinnati uh, that I'm calling secret anymore. If you're talking about the well, podcast. here's what it is. I'm going to tell you where it is, when it is, and how to get tickets. But the guests are a secret mystery. I can tell you right now. I have got six amazing guests. Uh, that I'm, I know who they are, and it's uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, you did a pretty good job. And I'm also uh pretty excited to say it's already three quarters of the way sold out, and we're uh still about two months away from the show. So it has allowed us to go ahead and start planning for the show for April too. And so I'm hoping that this will become an every month thing. And it seems like people are into it. Um, it's the Cincinnati Underground Society show. Um, if you want to get tickets, they're fifteen dollars. And once we cover the expenses. 50% of profits are going to go towards next month's show, and the other 50% I'm going to donate to a local Cincinnati charity. Uh, you can get tickets at bit.ly forward slash cuss march, C U S S M A R C H, because it is the March show. Um, and I'm also working, you, you might have seen the great logo made uh, by Justin Russo. 
Um, and I'm also working on some like enamel pins and stuff for the show, and profits from that will also go to the charity. Um, cool. But yeah, if you want to get tickets, bit.ly slash March. The show is March 30th, uh, and I hope to see you there. Also, Real quick, you want to tell us about the Joko Cruise? Yeah, so this is the last week uh, to get your tickets for the to get a, 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 a booking on the Joko Cruise. Um, some of those performers include Amy Mann, Jonathan Colton, uh, Jean Grey, uh, Cameron Esposito and Rhea Butcher. Uh, Teresa and I are going to be there. Our dad is going to be there. Full, Will Wheaton, Matt Fraction, uh, all kinds Fraction's of... Fraction's going to be there? Yeah, all kinds of really cool people are going to be there. Um, and you can come hang out with us on this boat for a week and do some super fun shit. Um, just go to jococruise.com, J-O-C-O cruise.com. Um, and you can come hang out. Uh, real quick, we are doing a graphic novel of the first arc of the Adventure Zone Balance called Here There Be Gerblins. Uh, and it's coming out this summer, and you can pre-order it right now at theadventurezonecomic.com. Also want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song as a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. It's a fantastic album that you should already have, along with all the other Long Winters albums. And uh, thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. You can go to MaximumFun.org and check out all the great free shows there. You're just going to love all of them. And if you want to hear more stuff that we do or see the video stuff that we do at Polygon, you can go to McElroyShows.com. And do you guys want that final? Yes. Yes. Yeah, here it is. It was sent in by uh, Leslie. Thank you, Leslie. It's Yahoo Answers user... Sorry, something's gone wrong. Let's just do a quick refresh of the data on the page. And Nope, something's still gone wrong. So we'll just call him Kenny asks. Encino Man. Fact or fiction? <laughs> <laughs> I am just a man. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This is when my brother, my brother, may kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. I'm Allegra Ringo. And I'm Renee Colbert. And we host a podcast called Can I Pet Your Dog? Renee, can I tell you about a dog I met this week? Uh, I wish that you would. In turn, though, can I tell you about a dog hero? May I tell you about a dog breed in a segment I like to call Mutt Minute? (laughs) I would love that. Could we maybe talk about some dog tech? Could we have some cool guests on, like Lin-Manuel Miranda, Nicole Byer, and Ann Wheaton? I mean... Yeah, absolutely. I'm in. You're on board. What do you say we uh, we do all of this and put it into a podcast? Yeah, okay. You think? <laughs> all right. Uh, should we call it like I don't know? Can I pet your dog? Sure. All right. Uh, what do you What do you say we put it on every Tuesday on Maximum Fun or on iTunes? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Meeting's over.